Fuse Transparent Conversations for Marriage, Family, and Relationships. We invite you to join us as we discuss perspectives that are thought about but not talked about. So tell your friends and family to check us out and join us on social media at FusedMarriages.com. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. You know what? You asked me, you know, before we even got on, like, how am I looking today? I said, you look good. You're not supposed to tell the folks. But, uh, I wanted you, to make sure everything was right. You look, I always look good, though. Very sweet Always, I haven't seen a day you haven't looked good, and you'd be like, like "Do I really?" It on thick, laying it on thick, laying on no, but you know it's the truth though. I can't make this up. You'd be like, "Do I really?" I ain't even done my hair yet. I ain't even did this yet. I ain't even. I'm like, "Hey, you look good to me though." Well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. It's the truth though. Because sometimes you don't always feel like you look all right, and I'm not just saying like like vanity good. Like you're like, okay, do I look all right? Like yeah. I look. Prepared. Look amazing. You look amazing Thank as you. as always. You're not too shabby yourself, handsome. Man, I just I just try to maintain. Be honest with you. <laughs> Why do guys always say that? Just try to maintain. Say, just try to maintain. Hey, it ain't. I don't know no. I maybe mean, I don't. You know, no guy don't tell me that. But like, I'll tell you what they're trying to maintain. Yeah, I don't ever. I really don't hear that term like that. But guys I'm not saying we don't. They don't use I'm it. Just saying guys don't compliment guys enough. Like girls will compliment. Girls often. Sometimes yeah. though, guys will compliment guys. You know what I mean? Like, man, that's right. That's a that's a nice little. You know what I mean? What you got put together, right? That's like a that, nice that suit. Green and white. Oh combination man! Hey, 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 y'all. We, we were we were in Fort Worth going to the, it was a play or whatever. It was, what was Fort it? Worth, Texas. Yeah. Yeah, going to a play. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went to, and now we we stopped to eat. Mm-hmm. And I went to the restroom. You know, just kind of just freshen up. Just use the restroom. Wash my hands. All that good stuff. We get ready to eat. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I go in there. I'm in. The, I'm in. The, I'm washing my hands. And a young guy comes in there. He said, man, you look fresh. I say, he said, I want to be like that when I grow up. Okay, let me tell you about this suit. And then we're going to jump to our side yeah, topic. It, okay, so he had this. He had those old school Steve Harvey pants, yeah, those wide clean, leg, white clean. linen, creased front pants. Okay. And then on top of that, he had one of those button down lime greens. He looked like Easter Sunday Mm -hmm. and he was feeling himself because even before we went out, I was like, babe, are you are you you sure? Mm -hmm. Are you sure about this? He was like, yeah, yeah, I look fly. I said, "Okay, all right. And then he got the compliment and he was just. He was on something after that. He was like, man, yeah, I was feeling good. He had like his tan belt and matching tan shoes. Yeah, it was clean. White linen pants hey. and lime green short sleeve button down I linen I thought shirt. I was clean. I don't know if I was or not. I thought I was. Listen, <laughs> listen I heard one time Steve Harvey talk about uh, Margie, his wife, um, Marjorie, his wife, saying like, okay, we got to we gotta change this up just mm-hmm. a little bit. And he mm-hmm. was really reluctant. And that's, that's my husband. He's, he's yeah. not as reluctant as he was. You helping me, though. You know what I mean? I, I mean, my, my fashion stuff. I'm on, I don't have a problem saying it. I'm not it, a you fashion know. girl. I but, just. Yeah, you, you are. In comparison to, to me, though, you comparison. are. Comparison. Yeah. Maybe. You make, you, you, make, you make sure I at least look, you know, presentable most of the time. Sometimes I go against the grain a little bit. Most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> most of the yeah. time. Yeah. Mm, and we've talked about it before, which you had on when we first met. Uh, I still married you because it's yeah. not what's on the outside. But I was the traveling. That so yeah. on that, talking about some of the things on the inside that count, yeah. we are going to jump into our topic for today. I think we have a good one today. You know what I mean? This is for everyone's relationship that's trying to really excel to that next level. Right. Mm-hmm. Whatever level you on now, you're trying to go to that next one. Uh-huh. And it's like, OK, we got to figure out that, you know what? You good and I'm good as far as good as in like at least in my mindset, in my heart, mm-hmm. and what I'm trying to offer and what you're trying to offer. But we're trying to take it to that next level. Right. And it, I, I was actually reading an article, and this is actually from the end of the summer, right? From the from the Olympics, summer 2021. Correct. End of this summer, this okay. past summer, mm-hmm. and and it was from the Olympics. You know, the Olympics actually happened a year after the fact in this year, so they just happened in 2021, mm-hmm. and it's about the USA track team. Mm-hmm. And I just read the, the 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 kind of the headline of it. It says a total embarrassment, right? And this is from Carl Lewis. A quote from Carl Lewis. Carl Lewis is a a rally now track person. If you don't know who he is, but slams the U.S. track leadership after four hundred four by one hundred relay failure. Okay, mm. and this part of the failure, right? It is. It says you know Carl Lewis called it a total embarrassment or whatever you want to call it. The USA still can find four men who can pass the baton to one another while running as fast as they can. 
Whoa! See, y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm excited because I know what that kind of means, what it goes to it. But like, they have this, these group of four men, if you don't know track, and they have a baton. They run around the track part of the way and pass it to the next person. Right. Goal is pass to the next person, run as fast as you can so you can get first place. Right. They couldn't do that. They didn't do that. End up failing even to medal mm -hmm. in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And I want to tie that back to as husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend, whatever like, relationship you're in, like, you're trying to like go to that next level. Y'all are both configured. Y'all are fast. Y'all are good. Y'all good people. Got good jobs. Got good hearts. Got good direction. But y'all trying to figure out how to pass that baton to each other. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, operating. That's the goal, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm with you so I can be even better. So I can be faster. So I can get to my goal faster. And sometimes that goal is right, right? And proving me to be a better me. Sometimes it's proving you to be a better you. Sometimes proving us to be a better us. Mm -hmm. Right? And we want to learn how to pass that baton. Okay. And I got different batons that we're going to talk about. And I'm going, I can't wait to hear what you have to say on all of this. Because you go, I know you got, you got some knowledge and insight about what that, what, how, what that looks like. And how we can oftentimes drop the baton. Mm. Right? Fumble it. Maybe not even drop it, just fumble it. And like, oh man, I'm out of sync now. Yeah. So let's talk okay. about it. Let's talk well, about let's it. Let's jump into it. Okay. Passing the baton. So um, one of the things that you were talking about, when, you know, kind of when we were discussing this show, you said it's not the speed, but the technique. Yeah. It's not the speed, but the technique. I thought that was interesting just because we're talking about, you know, like sometimes you can be focused on one thing and completely forget about everything else. So number one, your daily temperament. Yeah. So, I mean... We get we have it's the baton, right? We just, if you can in your mind, right? You got you have this this interaction between you and a significant other, mm -hmm. and I understand people go through different stuff throughout the day, and I think that's like or throughout the week or throughout the month, or just throughout whatever the year. But what's your daily temperament like? Because every time you interact in with your significant other, you passing the baton, mm -hmm. you moving the agenda forward, pausing or moving it backwards, and your temperament is an integral part. Of how the agenda is moving. So so break down what, what you mean when you say your daily temperament. What is that? What is the temperament? What should it be? What yeah. is it? What what should it not be? Yeah. I mean, so, uh, so for me, it's not for me to say what your temperament should be. I shouldn't say. I, I, have, a, I have an idea of how I think it should be. So I will give that okay. opinion on it. But if you waking up and you mad already and you just woke up. Your temperament, we passing the baton. We got to start the day mm -hmm. as a unit, right? Mm -hmm. And if I wake up like, man, just just own something, right? And not saying we don't never do that. Or we should, I mean, like, I wake up like not feeling, you know what I mean, whatever, just kind of just something on my mind. And you kind of off that morning. That happens. Mm -hmm. Nobody wakes up like, oh, yeah, hey, you know, every day. Every day I do because I'm just different like that. But I'm a morning person. Yeah. Catch me at night, though, my temperament different. Okay. You know what I mean? I get a little, watch out, kids. Watch out. You know, and that's like, you know, after 830. But in the morning, I'm like, perfect anyway. But, you know, so everybody got their own little, you know, struggle within what part of the day of what they are and how sure. they're trying to. But I'm saying this in general, right? I got you. Your temperament, you know, if you're waking up, right? Or, you know what, things trigger you that ain't got nothing to do with your spouse, mm -hmm. right? So you at work, people it happen all the time. Mm -hmm. Somebody at work do something crazy, say something crazy. And your temperament, that temperament carries over from where you at at work to home. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So... That's the idea of like, okay, what's your daily temperament, right? If I take, you know, I'm a math person, the average or the median value of your temperament, <laughs> does it meet a threshold of positive or negative, right? I'm not saying, okay, each moment you got to be on this positive side, but what's your median? You know, we do that. You, you know, you do that in, in, in real estate. They take the median value because sometimes the high value can drag down the low value. And the low value can drag down the high value. Come on, so they take Tom. the median, they take the all the numbers in order, and they take then what? Pick the one that's in the middle. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's a math lesson. Y'all can look that up how to do that. But, uh -huh. <laughs> but the median value of, of your temperament. So I think this is interesting because I was processing the idea of um, – passing the baton because so mm -hmm. often when we talk about passing the baton we're talking about to the next generation you know yeah passing it on to to the next person that's going to carry it to the finish line mm -hmm. but to to um reimagine the passing the baton to my partner in this race so that we can win the race is just such a um 
a new perspective for me. Maybe y'all have heard it before, but I haven't really thought about the passing of the baton to the to my mate and then trying to win this relay. So back in the day, I ran a little bit. Mm, I can yeah. tell. Let's see, just extra. No, no, you got, so you got that, I ran you got a little track bit. Look, but girl. one of the things that, um, so I never, I you know, I was, I, I couldn't do it for a long period of time. So mm-hmm. I just did it for a while. But I really like track. And one of the things that you kind of told that story, one of the things that we have here in Texas, and y'all can tell us if you have it in your state, mm-hmm. but we have Texas Relays. Mm. And watching the Texas Relays, because you can actually go there and see, like Olympics, some of us can't, <laughs> some of us can't do that just yet. Yeah. But you can go to the Texas Relays and you can watch these these people that train their whole life and yeah. same with the olympics they train for for years to have this one shot and this shot matters and it made me think when you were kind of talking through this sometimes some of us we prepare for marriage like we you know hey we're we're gonna be abstinent or not or we're gonna we're gonna go to church or we're gonna mm-hmm. read the book so we're gonna do all of these things like you prepare but when it's time for the race are we really are we really ready and that's one of the things i mean That's one of the things when you're talking about this daily temperament thing, you have to get that in check. And that doesn't have anything to do with your partner, because sometimes we can be so focused, you know, and and we're going to come back to the partner stuff. But sometimes we can be so focused on the marriage and on him or her and not be okay in ourself. Because when you run track, you have to prepare. You have to go lift weights. You have to be ready for the team aspect. You have to be ready. Okay, how did this handoff go? But you also have to be individually like straight. Mm-hmm. You have to go to the gym. Any team sport. And marriage is a team sport. But you have to go to the gym. You have to lift weights. You have to work on your time. You have to eat right. You have to take your vitamins. There are all those things that you have to do so that you're ready for the team sport. And sometimes we neglect the individual and in doing the individual work for the team like we're willing to like oh we're gonna get dressed up and go on date night and you know oh he's so cute I bought him this shirt or oh she's so fly like I like having her on my arm or whatever and then the individual work isn't being done because sometimes I think one of the things that I have you know talked to people about is they kind of think that that work is done in the context of relationship and Mm -hmm. part of it is but part of it is your individual responsibility so when you're talking about your daily temperament that is an individual responsibility that you can't project that onto your spouse. Now, my husband will check me in a hot minute and be like, what's going on with you? You're like, you need a minute? You all right? And and sometimes he won't say anything, but his temperament, he'll be so in control of himself that I'm like, Tristan, you tripping. You really are. Your husband is, he's doing everything right. Get it together. And then it could be vice versa. Normally it's, it's really him like calming me down, but there can be some times I'll be like, you need a minute. Like you, you kind of talking mm-hmm. outside of your face. You, you not doing it. You take your Real time. Talk. Um, so just kind of talking about this, when I think about those Texas relays, when I think about the Olympics, that handing the baton to your partner has to be, you have to get to your partner. You have yeah, to be, you yeah. have to have your speed up. You can't put all the work on them because one of the things about a relay is if I'm slow, you got to make up my time, Yep. you know, like, so I can't be just like, all right, well, they got it. You know, it can't just be, oh, they got it. I, you know, they good. I'm, I'm all right. I'm doing, I'm doing what I'm doing. So I just say all of that because I'm considering the idea of the daily temperament being part of personal responsibility. And then the partnership being one where there is communication, yeah. where he feels like he can, as he should. Tristan, you need to train. You need to get it together. You need to check yourself. And having that sort of partnerships, because we've talked to couples where they they cannot tell each other anything. That is yeah, not a healthy yeah. relationship. If Michael cannot come and tell me, Tristan, you're tripping, or I can't say to Michael, go take a minute because you need it. That's not in however you talk to your spouse. That might be how we talk to mm-hmm. each other. But if, we, if you don't have a partner where you can tell that, y'all might need to talk some things through because it's really important to be able that if anybody can tell you something, it shouldn't be your girlfriend that can tell you more than your husband can tell you. No, they can reaffirm, they can enforce, but Michael should be able to tell me some things and your husband or your wife should be able to tell you some things that maybe nobody else can say. Maybe nobody else has that space. So when I, when I think about that daily temperament, that was just kind of, kind of talking to me a little bit. So what I want to do right now is we're going to take a really quick break and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the next point of this whole handing the baton off to your teammate. We will be right back with Let's Used do it. Marriages. Let's do it. 
Hey, y'all, we just wanted to take a quick break and thank you for listening. We appreciate your support. Um, So if you haven't yet, make sure that you subscribe, follow us on all social media. And oh, we have this thing that we want you to check out fusedradio.com. There are other broadcasters that you will hear from. You're really going to love it. Um, So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You all are so wonderful. Um, And we look forward to connecting with you more in the future. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay. So we are jumping right back into our conversation um, about handing the baton off to Mm -hmm. our partner. Um, So we just got finished talking about the daily temperament and what that is and what that looks like in the context of your relationship. So we want to hear from you. Um, If you say, hey, you know what, this is something we got to work on. Or hey, we've got some tricks and tips that have helped us share them with the Fused community because we want to know we need we need to support one another. So join us at Fused Marriages um, or any of the social media platforms or email us info at FusedMarriages.com. Okay, so daily temperament. Next point that we were we were discussing mm-hmm. is the extra time you have. Let's the talk about that. The extra time and daily temperament. So let me just, I want to go back, if you don't mind, just for a second. Yeah. Not to daily temperament, not to the, the next topic. topic. Um, but when I think about the baton, right, and you think about just the whole idea of using the analogy of passing the baton to your teammate, to your significant other, mm-hmm. it's like, that's a detail. It's not that I didn't train. It's not that I didn't eat right. It's not that I didn't go to practice. It's a small detail of say, can I put this little stick, it's a stick if you don't know what time it is, into the person's hand mm. as they're running as fast as they can. So all the big stuff isn't taken care of, right? Yeah. All the I do all the big stuff right. Okay. Now can I get down to the details of life, relationships? Can I do that right? That's good. Temperament is a detail. Mm. It's not that I'm a bad person. It's not that like I'm just nasty all the time. Right. But is my what's my temperament throughout the day, throughout the week? That's a detail. I'm passing that to my spouse. Mm-hmm. Also, then I'm passing that if you have kids to my kids. Kids pick up on that. Oh, daddy mad today. They know it off the jump. Wow. That's you know true. what? Daddy, yeah, daddy, you know what? Mm-mm, I can't be around daddy today. He 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 ain't he had a bad day at work. Mm-hmm. Mom and daddy must be fighting. I can't mm I'm gonna go in my room. Like that's a temperament that you now you passing it on to your kids, right? They didn't they fumbling it. So they look in their relationships now. Okay, you know that's kind of their normal, right? Mm-hmm. Of what that temperament is in that house, or with you, or with that mom, or with that dad, and that baton could be fumbled. Not that it's dropping; it's just fumbled. And what it does a fumble do? It delays your time. It slows you down. Mm-hmm. So you can't get as far as you could, or as fast as you could, if you had a smooth transition, a smooth pass, right? So. I thought that was in my mind. It was like, you know, I saw it all. As far as you can without that smooth transition. Yeah, absolutely. Mm, Okay. That was good. Okay. So, so talk me through in light of that extra time you have the extra time, extra time, extra time. So really it's for me and maybe for you guys out there too. It's like time is what we is the most valuable thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And we got to, we have a, 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 I guess, choice of how we use our time. Right. When you're talking to, you know, about rather your significant other, your husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, it really comes down to what, what kind of time you spend with them. And really, what are you taking away from the things that you're doing in that, I'm calling it that extra time and spending with them? Mm-hmm. Is all your extra time, or do you, or do you have extra time first and foremost? That's a question everybody guys said, do I, do I have extra time? You'd be like, you know what? I really, I really don't. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I really do, but I go, you know, I watch eight hours of Longhorns, you know, I, actually, okay, I watch define, three define extra and define what you mean by the extra time. Well, is that like time not at work? Is that time? Okay. Oh, chilling? excellent. Okay, is good. that time? You know, what is extra time? What does that look like? Here's how I would define extra time. Mm-hmm. Extra time would be say, you know what, where I'm emotionally available. Mm-hmm. I have the capacity to either to provide feedback or give feedback on a conversation I have, I'm not distracted, right? And when we take the kids out of conversation, because, you know, we know kids can kind of, can take away some time aspect of it. (laughs) But minus the the kids aspects of being a parent, do I have the ability to say, you know what, or the time to really spend with my significant other? Okay. So now there's a kind of a baseline understanding. Extra time is Mm -hmm. the emotional and physical availability 
that you have for yeah. your spouse. Yeah. Okay. So keep going. So the extra time, the extra time we have, what? Yeah. So do do I have it to give? Right. And I think how much do what do I have it first and foremost, and how much do I have to give? Mm-hmm. That's a detail, mm-hmm. a detail of the relationship, right? The detail of passing that baton, really trying to move your relationship to that next level, mm-hmm. right? To get to that next love step, step mm-hmm. right? You ultimately we're trying to just each year we're trying to get to you know different level of love, right? Mm-hmm. And explore each other and do in different ways. And do I am I participating in the idea that I'm making sure I have extra time to give? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think of. Of the ones that we're discussing, I think this one is my hardest one. Like, it's very hard for me because I I just kind of used to think that it's if we're around each other, then we're then we're good. So I can be on my computer and you could be sitting right next to me watching TV. And to me, we we chilling together. But I'm not I'm not watching what you're watching. I'm on the computer and I'm working. I have a really hard time separating myself from from any kind of work because you know we have we have our businesses we have children we have Mm -hmm. all these different things so to carve out time has always been i mean even prior to getting married i had my friends would always tell me you're always working tristan you always working and i don't know how not to so i don't i think it's something that i really even wasn't truly aware i kind of thought everybody was being dramatic like I kick it with y'all from time to time, but I wouldn't make, I wouldn't make a lot of space. And I have such gracious and wonderful friends. I really do. Um, Because I, I, but one of the things that I've learned is kind of this balance thing. I haven't learned it. I haven't mastered it. One of the things I'm learning is balancing, you know, your goals and your aspirations with family and spouse um, and what that looks like. I remember talking to somebody um, before, I think when my when my um, daughter was born and she was like, you're still doing stuff. And, and I just remember her um, almost saying, like, why did you get married and have children? It felt this way. Mm-hmm. But why did you get married and have children? Because didn't you think it was going to slow you down? And I think that that was like my my biggest fear. Mm-hmm. And it didn't slow me, down, slow me down. Now it's just more trying to figure out how to be organized. But you mentioned earlier what this baton looks like. And I think having those those detailed conversations of, okay, this is what the day looks like. And, and having a spouse again, that will kind of say like, okay, well you might need to take a, take a minute or, Hey man, we need to spend some more time together. Don't be the relationship where you don't tell them that you need that time and they don't know, they don't recognize and learning your spouse is kind of part of that. you knowing that for me working is just normal. I've always just worked. Um, so being able to talk to me and say, Hey Tristan, you know, you might need to take a minute, you know, uh, you know, my daughter, she'll say, are you working again? I'll be like, okay, put down the computer. Yeah. Okay. You know, get, come out of the office. Okay. Spend some, spend some time, but being um, reminded in love about the need of that time until it becomes second nature. Cause for a lot of us, like my husband, he is not gonna work his fingers to the bone. He's going to be like, Nope, I'm gonna take a nap. <laughs> but mm-hmm. being able to, to recognize the need for a break to be able to say, okay, am I giving enough time away from the busyness or the stuff and mm-hmm. say, am I giving enough time? And sometimes that ebbs and flows. Sometimes there are seasons where you have to buckle down and then, uh, but that can't be the always norm. It can't be the, I'm always in this zone. Um, I'm always over here and I'm not giving enough time to him or to her. Um, and I'm not giving enough time to them. If you have children, um, I think you and one of our friends have the saying that kids spell, Love T I M E, but I think that's the same um, in marriage. That Great. your Agreed. relationships, Facts. you know, T I M E. That's how you say love. Even if their love language, even if they say my love language is not quality time. Yeah. Everybody needs the time in a relationship. Everybody needs that um, dedication, that undistracted, emotionally available, mm-hmm. even physically available time. Your friends need it. Your family needs it. Your spouse needs it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just as you was talking there, I was I was thinking, I'm like, you know, all of us have habits, right? And some of the stuff you say, you know, you struggle with, I struggle with one of the topics we're gonna go next is like, you know, the ones I may I struggle with, but it's like we all have habits, right? That we kinda we're trying to figure out like really trying to do something different with them, right? And I think I believe like habits are either they're learned, mm-hmm. they're encouraged, mm-hmm. or they're ignored, right? That's, that's how they good. develop. Learn learn habits are learned encouraged or ignored right Mm -hmm. 
we learned them right for just the so aspect right you know from my parents or my great grandparents from my family members from the people we're close to we learned these habits right of you know what what we do is you know a habit like you know we we sleep in or we get up early it's a habit right it's a habit just say you know it's just something like you just become accustomed to because the habit that you saw and you just picked up on right mm-hmm. then you got habits that you know we're talking about negative habits in this case right that are encouraged mm-hmm. right they say you know what somebody's saying oh, that's okay go ahead you know what you you work a lot it's no big deal go ahead keep work. like what i don't do you girl you do hustle. you yeah hustle. go get your hustle yeah go get your hustle make all that money man you know what your family gonna be good your kids gonna be good you, that's your job is to you know to, to provide so you go work you know all these hours and make sure they good it's encouraged mm-hmm. and then some of them ignored right you get a habit like you know what you kind of like you just you don't you don't complete stuff Ah, oh, it's okay you know what it's okay little johnny you didn't you didn't you didn't complete it you know do it next time I mean, that happens oh, it's the next day it's okay little johnny you didn't complete and now you got a habit of like not completing stuff right so the idea is like each of us are, have these habits that we've built over time mm-hmm. right a lot of us didn't these habits didn't happen when we just got together right right mm-hmm. you didn't you know you're talking about your work mine is maybe communication right it didn't just happen when i got with you mm-hmm. right that habit was either learned encouraged or ignored sometimes all three yeah. you know what i mean so so it's i i say that as a as really as a fact of encouragement right that like you can break that yeah. you can unlearn something you can stop encouraging bad habits you can stop ignoring bad habits and i'm saying habits that may be or batons that may be affecting your relationship yeah right because those details really matter like yeah. and and how ingrained they are. Mm-hmm. I just really love that habits are learned, encouraged, or ignored. Because when you think about it like that and you start trying to break down, was this a habit that was encouraged? You know, was mm-hmm. this just is this some was this something that I that was just ignored that people might have said to me before, but I was like, man, y'all tripping. You know, that sort of thing. I think that that's a really great way to do some, you know, some self inventory and try to figure out, hmm, what's going on with me? You know, who, who am I really? And how did I get to this space so that we can improve? Because to improve as a couple, you have to be willing to improve individually. Man, you, you have said to be willing to date. look at yourself. Woo. So, so yeah, so I don't, and I don't have a problem talking about, because I do work a lot. And it is something that I, Tristan, need to work on. And I encourage you to think uh, about yourself and say, hey, what is something that, that I do that might not be beneficial for my, for my relationship mm-hmm. that's taking away that time that my partner needs? And is it worth it? Is it say, is it a conversation that I've had? Hey, babe, right now, you know, I just started this new job and I have I have to really dedicate myself to learning the practice and then I'll yeah. back off on it. Or, hey, you know, right now we we have a newborn and we can't do the things that we used to do because we got to we got to figure out how, what this looks like. Like or, hey, you know what? We just relocated mm-hmm. and we're trying to figure out the city and we're trying to figure out how what this looks like. So the time that we would normally be spending together, I got to figure out where the nearest grocery store is and the gas station or whatever your case may be. Hey, I'm in school. I'm about to, you know, get my doctorate. So I got to buckle down for a year. Can we, how do we, where do we find our time in this year? How do we Mm -hmm. do our thing together? So whatever your situation, I encourage you to figure it out and to share it with your spouse, to let them know this is where I am. This is what I'm working on so that you can really be a team, Mm -hmm. which kind of brings us to the next, the next point. Um, as I was talking about talking to your spouse about mm-hmm. it, the the use of words, the words yeah. that you choose. The words that you choose and really should be on both sides of that. The words you choose and the words you don't say. Right. Because mm-hmm. some of us are quiet as a mouse and some of us are saying too much. Right. It's like the words you use. Right. Are, are they are they you know, you always say, is, is that building? Is that edifying? You know, she'd do me like that when I be sorry. I mean, you know what? Stop saying that because you, you're telling facts. You know what I mean? Because I may not be using the best words to really encourage and to edify and to uplift. And you know what I mean? I want. I'm passing the baton to you in that moment, mm-hmm. disagreement or not. We still trying to figure out. Okay, we practicing right now to passing that baton when we trying to communicate and go to do to do something different, right? Mm-hmm. To think different or make that next step or how we handle our kids or how we handle whatever issue that we're trying to do deal with right Mm -hmm. and you know in my case you know what i may just shut down and be quiet like hold on Mm -mm. what you got to say nothing you got nothing to say no sure will really no do that yeah Mm -hmm. so it's both ends like so you gotta i'm passing the baton i'm dropping the baton i ain't even passing i'm like no you can't get this Mm -hmm. not right now 
Hold on, we in a race? What we running right? The life is happening right now. I need you to pass something, do something. Fumble it, twist it up, put it on top of your head, stand on it, do something. Like you don't need just, don't just do you, nothing. Yeah, so like, you know, so to me, words are important. We can go all we can, that's almost yeah. a topic on itself. I think I mean you and I talk about this, but the word words have so much power. And mm-hmm. I don't know that we as a community, society, individual we recognize how powerful words are because words are not like, it's like you with words, you create everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's like this, this, like if you are, if you're a Christian, you read your Bible, we see that God created the universe with words. Mm -hmm. That's how much power words have. And if we, if we look throughout history, things, there are speeches. If we look at MLK speech, we still quote the speech because of the words that were said. There are, you know, like everybody likes all these celebrity quotes. The words that they say are powerful. When you watch movies or you listen to podcasts or radio, words have so much power. Music. There are songs that I remember just because of the words that they said in the song. Like, they're, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not good with the whole song. Y'all know that if y'all been watching for a little while. I'm like a chorus person. I know a couple of the other words, but I know the chorus because of the words. It was like, oh, I, I remember this. Now, some people are beat people. But for me, I'm a word person. Like, I like to know why did you say that? What did you say? What does that mean? And in the context of a relationship, how and what I say to my spouse in the you know timing tone and delivery all of that is me handing the baton because i can pass my negative energy on to him i can pass my attitude on to him or i can make him feel some kind of way because of what i say or how i see he can be like yo what's what's going on with you the same vice versa and then we do hand that down to our children how we talk and what we talk um you can't just get out in public and change it up and now y'all something completely different than how he talks right. to you or how right. she talks to you when y'all in the car or when y'all at the house that does not that doesn't work somebody if not both of you are miserable so mm-hmm. get help for that because our we need to figure out how we talk to ourselves how we talk to our, our spouse and how they hear it how you know how somebody talked to you might not be how you need to talk to them how your dad talked to your mom might not even if they have a loving wonderful relationship this is your spouse and you need to talk to them in the way that they can hear and the way that matters to them. So I think that that, that words thing, that communication piece is just a huge piece. And they all kind of blur in together because your daily temperament, how do you operate? How do you function in yourself? How, what are the words that you use when you talk to you? And what are the words that you use when you talk to your spouse and making sure that we're managing our time well so that we are able to be in communion, be in connection because we can operate as a team, we can hand that baton back and forth. So anything you wanted to add to that before we close out the show? No, no, no. You know what? Y'all, y'all share this if somebody can, you know, feel, feel a need that can help somebody. It may not, you know, can help you directly because you, you're on that level already. But somebody you may, relationship you may know, right? Yeah, I share share this help. with them. You know what I mean? Just try to, we're trying to help. We're trying to grow. We're trying to encourage, you know what I mean? In a positive manner. So. Yes, yes, sir. So thank you guys for joining us today. And make sure you check out um, our other platforms, Facebook and Instagram, and our website for more content and resources, FuseMarriages.com. Let's talk about it. You're listening to Fuse with Tristan and Michael.